Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome back, it's Jordan here. Today we're going to be taking a look at every single LEGO modular building that I have modified. So I've essentially increased the size of all 10 of these buildings. We're actually going to start with the Grand Emporium because this is the oldest modular building that I have modified. Now keep in mind when we have a look at these, I've actually modified all of my modular buildings by converting them into mill splits by adding the 2x2 bricks underneath and then adding a layer of plate and then transferring the entire modular building on top of that plate. It's just like a way to reinforce the plate. And I've also changed up the sidewalks as well. I've removed some of the details. I switched up all my lamps with the black ones and then I actually changed the color from dark gray to light gray. So where you see dark gray tiles, those actually used to be light gray tiles. And where you see light gray tiles, those used to be dark gray. So I sort of inverted it just because I like the light gray as sidewalks. Now in regards to the Grand Emporium, I haven't made very many changes to it, but I actually added an additional floor. And that's this floor right up here. However, you can see the changes aren't quite done yet. There is some part substitutions. For example, those white windows there should be dark green, like all of the other windows found in the Grand Emporium. It's a pretty cool modular building. My wife actually got me this one here for Christmas when I first started collecting Lego. I thought it would be pretty cool to increase the height of the Grand Emporium, so I pretty much just grabbed the instruction manuals, flipped through it page by page, and wrote down all of the parts. So I actually added them to a BrickLink wanted list, and then I ordered all of those parts to create a second floor. However, it's not quite done yet. As you can see, there are no interior details other than the continuation of the escalator. Personally, I think the Grand Emporium needed the additional floor because I've increased the height of so many of my modular buildings and I just think it blended in better with my cityscape. I've seen some people take two Grand Emporium modular buildings and make a double quarter. They definitely look pretty epic. The next one that we're going to have a look at is substantially changed from the original design and that is the pet shop. Luckily for me, I actually had two pet shop. So what I decided to do was merge the pet shop building into one large structure. And then the other half of the modular building remains the same. However, I have two of them and actually merge them onto one mill split. So I've got two townhouses and a double pet shop. So of course I decided to center the door and make it a double door with a large arch going over top of it. It says pet on this side and shop on this side. And then there's a nice checker pattern out front of the windows and doors. The interior of the pet store has been completely changed up. We've got a large aquarium right there in the corner. And then there are some fish tank accessories on top of those terrariums, an area for the dogs, some more accessories on that shelf there over top of the other terrarium, the cash counter, some treats for the puppy dogs or cats, and then the cat corner just right there. Also some birds when you come in the front door. Around back of the pet shop, there is a staircase which leads up to the shared patio. Then we have two identical apartments that have a chair, a fireplace, a small closet underneath these stairs that go up to the third floor and also a small kitchenette. And the third floor is just a half floor that looks down into the second floor there. We have a small bed and also a side table. I know there's not much going on inside these buildings, but this is actually close to the original design. And as you can see, it's completely modular and each apartment features its own roof that has a skylight built into it. Similar to the Grand Emporium, I also decided that the brick bank also needed some more height, so I added an additional floor to it as well. The brick bank is pretty cool because not only do you have the bank, but you also have the soaps and studs laundry mat. And when you have a look at the main facade of the brick bank, you can tell that, oh my gosh, I keep forgetting to order the sand green windows. No, these should not be tan and green, but that is the floor that I added. The part swaps that I had to make over here have been made, so that's good. I had to order some of the dark orange pillars, but I eventually plan to order the sand green windows as well. So I copied the second floor design and I kept some of the play features. So for example, these crooks here can still go down this chute, which will lead into the vault of the bank, I believe. I can pop the roof off here so you can look into the floor that I created. There's still a lot of open studs there because I want to add some more detail in here, but there is an office with an armchair, a desk, and a lamp, also a pretty cool sticker element there from the Sesame Street set. And you can look down into the bank. I wanted to keep this shape for the floor because I think that's so cool how you can look way down there. That's why I decided to copy this floor. There are some small details there which I could replicate 
and add to this floor as well. But there we go, we've added some more height to the brick bank and I was really happy with this decision. But once again, I still need to order some windows. Maybe what I could do just for now is just swap up these windows here. Maybe the ones on the skylight don't need to be sand green. I could just take those sand green windows, allocate them to here, and then maybe make the ones on the skylight tan. I think that would be a pretty easy change. But there you go, we've got the brick bank with an additional floor. Now I also had two corner garages in my modular building collection, so I decided to increase the height of it by adding two additional floors. I also made a pretty big change down here as well, and that was by inverting the color of the tile. For some reason, the original set has the sidewalk as dark gray, and then the driveway for the vehicles that actually pull up to get gas as light gray, and I just didn't really think that made any sense. So I swapped it up, I just inverted it. I just think this looks so much better, it makes more sense because the dark gray matches up with the roads. And I actually made that change long before I added two additional floors to this build. And of course, adding these two floors was actually quite simple. All I did was just reference the instruction manuals. However, mine was actually a pub, which was a rebrickable model. So when I took my additional set apart, I had to reference the instructions, piece it all out, and then build the shells of the floor. So I copied the wall design, door design, patio design, and window design. So you can see these are the two original floors and then the two floors that I added. So we have balcony, window, balcony, window but I didn't want to copy the interior details of these two floors because I thought that would be sort of weird. So I decided to add some custom details to the interior of the top two floors. So down here, of course, we have a garage and then there's a veterinarian that doesn't deal with snakes. I figured I'd keep that animal vibe going on the second and third floor. So first off, I've got a doggy daycare, I've got some doggy art mounted to the walls, and then there's all sorts of dogs hanging out on their couches. There is a water and food dish there, all sorts of toys, a really neat Dalmatian carpet. You've got the gate blocking the staircase going down and also up. And I'm sorry, that was actually the third floor. The fourth floor is the kennel. So I've got some custom made kennels in here. These are pretty cool. Some nice cages built using some plates, tiles and brackets. There is a dog poster on the wall there. Warning, dogs. There's a missing cat thing over here. And then there's also a dog or animal wash station right over here. So you got a cabinet with some soaps and then also a sink with a hose attachment there. And leading up to the final floor is one of the original corner garage floors, which of course is an apartment. The apartment's pretty cool. It's got like the truck there, the nice kitchenette, a small bathroom, a bed, and this is the original design from the set. So I thought it was pretty neat to add, I thought it would be pretty neat to add some more height to this building. It is huge now and it is like really tall. I know when I positioned it in the Lego city last, I had like these dark orange walls facing and I probably want to add some billboards to these or try to position it up against some other tall buildings so that it hides these big dark orange walls. I decided to treat the bookshop modular building very similar to the pet shop modular building in the sense that I had two of them and just merged them into one. So rather than having a half base plate bookshop module, I decided to make a full base plate and then I have two identical townhouses. But this one is really nice. I like the center door, the contrasting colors of nougat, black and gold with those diamonds and the birch books print pieces and then the uh, dark red roof and this large arch here going over top of those windows. And by using the two modular buildings, I was able to give the interior just so much more space. So you've got the cash counter there underneath the staircase, which curves at the beginning. There's a flat section with a book cabinet on top, and then it continues up to the second floor. And then there's all sorts of bookcases right over here. There's a large one, a reading chair in the corner, two smaller ones, and then a smaller central one there as well. And then there are some books in the front window, and there's also a bookcase out front of the bookshop. Those nice white windows with the green shutters as well. And then that staircase is gonna line up with the second floor here. And there's another staircase which leads up to the third floor. The second floor does have some details. There's just a reading chair there, some more books in a little cabinet, and also a grandfather clock. And there is a patio that can be accessed through this door right here as well. 
And the third floor, which is constructed using all of these awesome dark red slopes, is really cool as well because it actually splits in the center. It's got a slightly angled window back here too, and this will just pop off like that. And up top, there's a couple beds and also a fish tank. A lot of these details and mini builds, once again, came from the original build. Overall, I am a fan of the doubled up bookshop. I think it's cool how we have a larger face there. However, in regards to the townhouses, I should try to get a different number on those triangular printed dials, but I don't know where to get triangular printed dials with different numbers on them. It is a small detail, but it would be nice to change that up. But I just think that looks cool because there's so much frontage and that building just really pops when it's placed in the Lego city with other modular buildings. I took the police station and I made it absolutely massive. I can't even remember how many sets I used to construct this. I think it was three. So we've got the police station, which consumes an entire base plate, and it's four stories. Also, we have the donut cafe to the left here, and then the city press to the right. Classically, all three of these structures shared a single base plate. So I doubled the size of absolutely everything. And the nice thing about it is the fact that this is its own separate modular building. So that's a half base plate. And same with this one over here. It's got like the carpet streaks with those lines there. There is a desk and also a waiting area, a water jug over here, and then two jail cells. The stairs, of course, lead up to the second floor where we have the chief's office, an area where you can take mug shots. And then there's a crime board over here on the wall and two desks along with the staircase leading up to the third floor. There's an evidence room with a giant pallet of cash, some white stuff, miscellaneous weapons, and then there is the interrogation room here as well. And the final floor, unfortunately, does not have any interior details. I'm a little bit disappointed in myself. I completely forgot that this did not have interior details yet. So I need to get around to adding that but I definitely like the size of this police station. And it's pretty cool seeing all the floors split apart just like that there. On the ground floor of City Press, we have a newspaper press. What do you know? There's also some supplies on that shelf back there, a little workstation, and then there is an area where guests can come view the press in action because it's just a classic ink press. Then we have another floor here, and this floor is just a stock room. We've got all sorts of cardstock and boxes there and also some ink bottles. There's a staircase leading up to the next floor, which is looking down into the cardstock room area. And up here is just a little desk and a typewriter and then some ink that spilled onto the floor. Inside the donut cafe, we have some donuts and pastries on the back wall there beside the Slurpee machine, a little service counter along with a coffee pot and a cash register and some other miscellaneous treats, lavender and white. And then there's two donut decorations, one on either wall. The next floor features a washroom, kitchen, couch, and TV. And then there's a ladder going up to the loft where we have a nice bed, some carpet, and also a record player. There we go. That's my massive police station and its counterparts. My rendition of the Boutique Hotel is a double corner building that I built using the parts from three Boutique Hotel sets. So it's a double corner, and then we have the El Cubo Fine Art Gallery right down here. There is an angled entrance on this side, and also another angled entrance on this side. And then up top here, we have a nice rooftop bar. There's some palm trees, some swivel chairs, and a massive skylight that looks down into the third floor. And then there is a staircase that has a covering that matches the skylight. The interior features a bar, which has all sorts of spirits behind the counter there. It also has a fridge, espresso machine, and a sink. There's a piece of art on the wall right beside it. There's two couches, a table, and some flowers behind those couches right here. There's a concierge desk with three clocks behind, indicating different times from around the world. There are some keys right there beneath the staircase, along with a drawer unit with some open drawers. Another couch right here by the window that actually looks into the fine art gallery, which is El Cubo. We've got uh, some abstract art on the wall, behind the desk, in the center, and of course in the front windows as well. And this massive modular building consumes two base plates, and it's pretty cool. It's just like one big open concept. Taking the stairs up to the second floor, we have a nice hallway here, which has some beautiful hardwood 
Our first room features a bathroom, of course. There's a lamp in the corner, an old school TV, and a large bed, along with a desk and a cabinet. This is the smaller of the three rooms on the second floor. It also has a bed, an old school TV, and of course, a bathroom with a bathtub. And then a matching room, that's matching this one over here, has a bed, TV, cabinet, desk, bathroom. And those two on the corners there, they actually feature a patio. So you can come on out and enjoy the fresh air. The rooms on the second floor are pretty nice, but the beautiful renovated suites are on the third floor. We've got some art on the wall here, which came from the El Cubo Fine Art Gallery. This room features a couch, which is underneath the staircase there, along with a table and a mini fridge. There is a cabinet with a $100 bill on top and then a little armchair in the corner there, a very modern bed and reading lamp along with a side table and an upgraded television. And look at this bathroom here. It has a nice glass shower, beautiful vanity, nicely tiled off as well. This is definitely the best room in this hotel because it features a small kitchenette. There's also the couch with some modern art above it and this little table in the center of the room along with another modern bed and also washroom. So yeah, we got some really nice suites on the third floor. I really enjoyed making this one here. I know it sort of takes away some of the original design elements, specifically the shape of the original set. It was pretty unique. It had like that patio, but it didn't have very many rooms. My goal was to make this like an actual hotel and it has five rooms, which is pretty substantial for when it comes to Lego. The Jazz Club looks pretty much like the original, doesn't it? but it's actually much larger. So I was able to expand it by 16 studs, making it one and a half base plates. And I did that by adding some studs to the Jazz Club itself and also the Pizzeria. Specifically, the Pizzeria really stands out now because the original set, it had the Pizzeria, but it was like very skinny and it was sort of like a side structure of the Jazz Club. But I do like how I was able to keep the different height variants and also the different depths between the two structures. So for example, we have the Jazz Club right here, it's nice and tall, and then we have the Pizzeria, which is actually inset a little bit, and it's much shorter than the Jazz Club. I was really happy with my decision of expanding the Jazz Club just because it matches the size of some of my other monstrous modular buildings, so they blend together in a better way. And I also really love these color combinations, like the dark red and dark azure, and also this yellow here. So I wanted to make it more prominent in my Lego city. It has a larger corner stage with the overhead lighting and also tables and chairs out front of it. There's a bar right here with some drinks that are on a cabinet behind the bar there. And there's just more space for like dancing and things that you'd expect to find at a jazz club. Plus you can get a drink now, which is super nice. Over here in the pizzeria, there is a place to sit and it's just a little bit more spacious. Take the stairs up to the second floor where there are some chairs outside of the manager's office. That's where the talent can await their appointment with the big boss lady who's behind her desk there. She's got some flowers in the corner along with a lamp and a nice couch. And of course you can check out the evening's performance right through there. There is a lavender door and that leads into the tailor shop. Got all sorts of fabric on that cabinet right back there. And then there are two sewing machines. The third floor has an open area with a ladder which goes up to the rooftop and then there is a makeup room. You've got a makeup desk there and one with a mirror right over here and also a couch. And then we've got another piece of art which came from the El Cubo Fine Art Cafe. This is the roof for above the tailor shop where we actually have a nice greenhouse. And I really like the roof design of the Jazz Club. I was able to scale everything up perfectly so that it matches the original design. And that's what I really like about this modification is it's essentially the original modular building, but it offers us 16 more studs of frontage. And I just think it really pops in a LEGO City layout. The Sanctum Sanctorum is a Marvel set. Is it a modular building? Yes, it's also a modular building as well. And that's why I'm gonna include it in this overview. And it is a modular building that I did modify. Mine is actually substantially larger than the original. It is taller and also wider. I increased the height of the second floor. I believe I added one brick of height to the ground floor as well. And then I filled in this alley here because this actually used to be an alley and the building wasn't really complete. So now mine is a complete corner that is taller than the original. 
The floor, of course, is completely tiled off. The staircase is just beautiful leading up to the second floor. We've got some added interior details as well. And it's pretty cool because this right here is still modular. We can remove this back panel. And there we have the time stone and also one of the books. And we can also remove this staircase to gain access to more interior details as well. So that will just pop out. And then we've got like this hidden back room right there. The second floor is where we get most of the height. You can see how deep it is. Oh, those are some tall walls, but it just adds so much height to the exterior and also gave us some more interior wall space as well. Like look at the size of that cabinet right there with all the books and the relics on top. You got the skull there as well, some sticker elements, and then there is Gargantos bursting out of the wall there. Definitely wanted to keep that nice Easter egg. The walls are constructing using masonry and nougat and also light gray. There are some chairs over here and also a little showcase as well, a lamp in the corner and just all sorts of little Doctor Strange like details. And right here, I wanted to keep that play feature and I can still slide these tiles which are embedded on the back wall and that can actually change. They are a little bit harder to change with my model because I didn't want anything protruding off this back wall. So you sort of got to grip it with your finger and slide it over like that there. Normally you'd have some one by two with the slide coming off them or the rail coming off them. So it's a little bit easier to do, but you can still change that sticker element within that door with my model. Now I'm calling this my model, but let's be honest, I copied most of these designs from the original. I just increased the size of them, added more of them and slightly modified them for the bigger version. So got to give the designer full credit for everything. There are some interior details in the roof as well. So we've got some cabinets there, a chest, there's the uh, mannequin, another cabinet, some stuff mounted to the wall, some showcases, some more chests as well. And then there is this little panel which can actually be flipped outward. And that is the Captain America sticker piece. And that's actually mounted sideways in there. Unfortunately, I can't really showcase that because this is a corner build. A building goes up flush against it. But if by chance it's not in that position, then I would be able to flip out that uh, Captain America advertisement. And of course, saving the biggest for last, it is the Marvel Daily Bugle. I increased the size of this thing in a big way. It now sits on one and a half base plates. I also added an additional floor and all of the floors have been expanded width wise as well. There are so many windows, just such a huge building in the Lego city. And I love the fact that you can pose minifigures all over it to tell different epic stories. Just like the original, the front glass panels can be removed to expose the interior details and the floors will come apart like a modular building as well. Up top here, we got J. Jonah Jameson's office. He's got a little stogie there, a nice cabinet. There's a humidor behind him. He's got a TV and a couple chairs. This is his receptionist's office right here. There's some awards, also a couple pieces of amethyst and some newspapers. And then there is a security desk as well. Below that, we have a broadcast studio, got some overhead lighting there, a nice camera, also a green screen. There is a television or crime board there as well. And then there's a place where people can get all dolled up and get ready for the set. You'll note that there is an elevator running through the entire thing, just like the original. Right here, we've got a copy machine and a cabinet and some desks some places to work and there's Spider-Man's desk as well. And below that there is the newsroom. You've got multiple monitors on the pillars that support the ceiling. And there's all sorts of desks and activity happening all around this floor. And then we can take the entire thing apart to reveal the details on the ground floor as well. I of course like to live dangerously and just removed all the floors as one big unit. That's a little bit dangerous. Hey, I forgot to mention that this floor here is actually a little bit deeper. Therefore, we can add more depth to it, and more detail. Also, there's the ledge right here, which has a little patio or balcony, and you can access that by going out the door right there behind the cabinet. But there's some boxes in front of it. There's also a spider and a spider web right there. And with those floors removed, we can check out the interior details of the ground floor. There's a couple vending machines, a waiting area, 
There's some newspapers mounted to the wall, a newspaper rack, and a fish tank in the center there, along with a curved desk with the elevator access. And then this wall here will, of course, blast out just like the original. So you can make a pretty cool story with that. And then there's all sorts of boxes and dumpsters out back here, along with the newspaper stand on the side. And I love the fact that the Daily Bugle just towers over the other ones. J. Jonah Jameson definitely means business. So everybody, that is 10 modular buildings that I have modified. Let me know what your favorite one is by commenting below. And of course, I could have included other ones in this overview as well, such as all of the three-in-one buildings that I've modularized and placed in the LEGO City. But I wanted to stick with the main core modular buildings. I think going into the Sanctum Sanctorum and also the Daily Bugle might have been a stretch as well, but I just really like them and I think there's some pretty cool mods that blend together with these other modified modular buildings. Everybody, thank you so much for coming on by. Please remember to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for some more great stuff coming out in the very near future. Farewell!